Welcome everybody to the 4th of July a Family Christian Center weekend. I'm glad you're in the house. Anybody glad you're in the house of God? And all of our out-of-town guests and all of those that, have, that went out of town and all of those that are watching, let this be a, a glorious, glorious weekend of enjoyment of freedom. I'm reminded that, that the Declaration of Independence in its making as Thomas Jefferson, one of the five committee men appointed by the congressman to put together the Declaration of Independence. I quote one of the lines in which this Declaration of Independence by 13 colonies was making a declaration to Britain, to the mother country as the pilgrims had come here. And there they decided that independence was important, that taxes and government and making this uh, a nation would be important to the people that sacrificed to get here from over the Atlantic. And as men of 13 colonies gathered together to choose their best leaders, we find that Thomas Jefferson and John Adams, these men qualified to put words together, to put a piece of document together called the Declaration of Independence. They would then sing it, send it to King George and, and not only recommend, but to say clearly, we will now take care of ourselves and we will make our own government. We will not have to depend upon the mother country. We will not have to depend upon other countries. And so in this birthing process, this, this like a woman being pregnant, now going to give birth to a new freedom, to a new land, and to a new nation. Of course, it was not readily received. And so the people must rally around a piece of document and unify in the spirit of freedom and the Declaration of Independence was that piece of document in which was read in 13 colonies and that all that were members of the 13 colonies knew what it said and declared these words that I quote from some of the Declaration of Independence. It says, we hold these truths to be self-evident that all men are created equal, that they are endowed by the Creator with certain unalienable rights, that among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. I would like for everyone to join in with me and speak these words that are from the Declaration of Independence. Are you ready? And I would like for you to do it loud. If you don't know how to read, just act like you know how to read and repeat after the person next to you. Everybody together, we hold these truths to be self-evident, that all men are created equal, that they are endowed by the Creator, and with certain unalienable rights, that among these are life, liberty, and pursuit of happiness. You never met him, but I hope we meet him Thomas Jefferson needs a great big applause or an amen and wow in this piece of document. We see that they sent it and it was sent with the bloodshed of the Revolutionary War. They say the first president, George Washington, once fought for the British, was a tremendous soldier in his own way, was promoted to a lieutenant in the British armies then become very, very passionate about the land and the Virginia that he lived upon, realizing that it must have independence. He joined, or they collaborated, Congress did, to hire or to ask or to choose one that would lead the commanding officers and the armies, the young armies of the 13 colonies. It was George Washington. They say he was 30 feet from the British 
bullets would go through his clothing but never hit George Washington. The Indians called him the white ghost rider that could never die. And in the conflict in all that he was in and the skirmishes and the fighting, George Washington led. It was that cold winter, winter time in which it was going to conclude and no one know when the war would could be concluded. But it was George Washington's decision to take the cold soldiers. Muskets were not many and boots were not many and the clothing was not warm. But George Washington decided in the midst of winter to attack the British and smartly as he did, we won the Revolutionary War. But what was so moving and passionate, if you read history, it was George Washington on a white horse that stood out in front of the armies and was not afraid to lead. Give us more people who are not afraid to lead for justice, for freedom, and for righteousness. Today I stand before you, we all are here, and we all could say thank God for the United States of America. You can't appreciate that, but you can appreciate it if you will save your money and go to a third world country. Take a trip beyond the borders of the United States of America. You hear in the news of people begging, slipping, and, and, and either going under the wall or over the wall or coming by boats, wanting to come here. And if you was to ask every immigrant, and I know that some have come with motives that are not good, but the majority would tell you, we have heard about the great land called Promised Land America, a land where men are created equal and that men can strive for happiness and pursue life. And there is the desperation from where they come from. It is not there, the freedom. And so the effort is made to come to a land that has the Statue of Liberty that says, bring me all of the poor and the bonds and those that want freedom. And today, you and I, I am privileged to say, I was born in the United States of America and not ashamed to say, thank God for the United States of America. The freedom that we enjoy, the freedom that, that is in our schools, in our public places, in our neighborhoods, in our cities. We could quickly go to media talk we could quickly go to uh, the media's voice box and dwell upon the negative because on my television set and on my podcast and on my social media and my radio, usually the media is not so positive. But I want to tell you it is positive because God is still in control of the United States of America. I know that there are those that scream with loud voices that America is going to hell in a handbasket. Everything is coming apart and all because we live in the moment. But I want to declare to you, on the same day, on the same day that Thomas Jefferson read his last letter at noon, on July 4th, 1826, he was the second president. Adams was, John Adams was the third president. Both had been at odds. One was 90 and one was 83. They had now retired and now they were in their place. One was in, was in Virginia while the other one was in Massachusetts. John Adams and Thomas Jefferson did not agree politically. It was tremendous rivalry between both of them. And there was always at odds. But in the latter years, the latter years of both of their lives, they settled down to love one another 
to agree that it was a great sacrifice what they had done by building and putting together the de Declaration of Independence. There was one thing that they agreed upon, and that is it was not the 4th of July, it was the 2nd of July that the Declaration should be celebrated. They agreed strongly and would always proclaim it was the 4th of July in Philadelphia or it was the 2nd of July and not the 4th. It was the noon hour of 1826. Thomas Jefferson was 83, and about 11 o'clock he read his last letter, which was from John Adams. I wish they would celebrate independence on July the 2nd. It was 60 minutes later that Thomas Jefferson died. It takes time because there was no FedEx, there was no UPS, there was no air mail, and word could only get by Pony Express from city to city, house to house, and to ear to ear. Unbeknownst to John Adams, that same morning, he was 90. It was July 4th, 1826. His last words, John Adams, Thomas Jefferson has outlived me. Unbeknownst to him, he died at 5 o'clock. Thomas Jefferson died at noon. Unbeknownst to John Adams, Thomas Jefferson died on the same day as John Adams. Both died on July 4th. Maybe God said July 4th ought to be the celebration of the independence of America. And so we have adopted and we are here today because men who were in disagreement and agreed and they quarreled, but thanks be to God, they always turn to God and God knows how to keep freedom alive and well in the hearts and in the nation. The only way that we are going to be able to keep freedom in our families, freedom in our schools, Freedom in our, in our streets and freedom in our nation. Freedom even in our world. The only way that we're going to be able to keep freedom is that we are going to have to know that God has given us the spirit of freedom. No man can do that, although we accolade them for continuing to fight for freedom. But listen to the scriptures verse today. Stand fast, therefore, in the liberty wherewith Christ hath made us free. Let me tell you, in the spirit of freedom, in the spirit of freedom, you're going to find Christ. And when you get the spirit of freedom inside of you, you will notice that our forefathers always leaned to God, always talked about God. Now I know we have come through a period and a season and time in which a generation says, God is not a big deal. So we are going to graduate God or I could say kick him out of school take his textbook, his Bible, and place it out of our educational places. We have gone through where people have lost conviction and they have said, we will do such and such. May I tell you that when freedom comes, it delivers you from where you are, but it also gives you a right of four what you're going to experience. Freedom, freedom can be mischievous. It can be mistaken for I can do anything that I want. If you're not careful, you will find that freedom will do things to you that will not prepare nor give you great future. Just because you've got freedom doesn't mean you can do anything you want. You will notice in the scriptures as they put it back up in Galatians 1 or 5 and 1, 
Stand fast, therefore, in the liberty wherewith Christ hath made us free, and be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage. In other words, Jesus is saying, I'm going to give you freedom, but you're going to have to be careful how you use freedom. It was a great thrill that day when I got my license at 16 years of age. It was a great thrill that I was handed the keys by my father. And he said, now you can take the car. It was unbelievable that moment of 16. I rolled all the windows down even though it was hot. And I turned the radio as loud as it could go even though the speaker was broken. It was so cool to to sit back at 16 and have my hands on the wheel of that car and say, I have freedom now. There's nobody watching. I've got license in my pocket. And if I can get between the policeman and the speed limit, I have freedom. I have freedom to go down the highway. I have freedom to pick anybody up. I have freedom to go where nobody can follow me. And in those days, there was no GPS and there was no stickers on the car where you could follow where your children are. And I would recommend all grandparents and parents find those stickers and put them on when they're not looking so you know where the car is. Freedom was so incredible, but I found out that in my freedom at 16, I could take advantage of my freedom that I could do things that I was not supposed to do. We'll change the course of the story and talk about college students at 18 years of age. Goodbye, Mom and Dad. I'm going to college. Mom and Dad drops them off at college, and all of a sudden, there's freedom. Freedom to get with the fraternity and, and to get with all of the people and groups who do things they're not supposed to do. There are drunken parties, and then there are, then there are sexual activities, and then there are drugs. And all of that is in that world, all because someone has said, I now have freedom. My mom and dad, and nobody knows what's going on. I can do anything I want to do. And you will find that that freedom that is given to you, if you do not use it right, it can destroy you. You find yourself doing things you should not do. The first date, the first date nobody is around. The first time you're with a girl and a boy, just wanna tell all you young men, date a girl. I, I, I. I didn't have to preach that 20 years ago, but now you have to say, date a girl. A girl, you know what a girl is. Girls date a boy. And in that freedom and in that moment of, 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 of freedom, being alone, taking the car, being by yourself, freedom, it feels so good. You can hold her hand and you can say things that you can't say in front of your mother or your father and the Google eyes, etc. That's as far as I'm going is holding hands and Google eyes. Where are you going? What did you do in the moment you had freedom? Freedom in which comes to all of us in segments and times and what we do with it is very important. How can I stay in the boundaries of freedom and not wreck myself? I have seen individuals that have or read of individuals and met individuals that won the lottery and the lottery they thought was freedom. Hundreds of millions of dollars. I can do anything I want. I can buy anything I want. I can buy my friends. I can buy material things. I've set myself up because I am free, because I have money to make me free. 
It is the most interesting thing that, that I think the statistic is 89% of lottery winners end up in bankruptcy because what they thought would make them free put them in bondage. You need to understand today that what freedom you have, freedom to say I no longer work, I am retired. I am my own decision maker. I don't have to listen to anybody. I, I have freedom to do what I want. My mate has died and now I am free. Now I have plenty and I am secure. I am free. I just want to declare to you that even God says, you better be careful even if I give you freedom. If I give you freedom, if I, if I give you opportunity to have life, if I give you opportunity to be a brand new creature, if I take your life and you've done a bunch of bad things in life, I'll forgive you, I'll cleanse you, and I'll make you a new creature. If you are among us today and you're wondering about religion or Bible or church or today, and most likely you have come if you are a guest I will assure you that we are a unique church. This is not cigarette smoke that you are sucking in. This is fireworks, which they should have had the hatch open and they didn't do it quick enough and, and all of that. But maybe we need a little smoke just to kind of let us know that the bombs did go off and artillery did happen and there was a war fought and we now got freedom. And the fact is, is that today you may wonder about religion or church or God. Well, the simplistic is this, is that God sent his son. He knew you had no freedom. And he knew that every baby born would never have freedom. So he sends his son to take your place for all of us probably we're headed for the electric chair or for prison and you're sitting there saying not me well let's get to the combination of your closet and find out how good you really are even mentally you have killed people and and mentally you have destroyed many things in your mind and and, and maybe you, maybe you're perfect, but most people have a tongue which is more powerful than an AK-47 that when you speak against someone, you kill them. So we don't want to go to the fact that you're holy and you've never done anything and just because a bullet's not come out of your chamber or somebody hasn't been killed in the, your name or there has not been robbery and you haven't so... But the fact is we have all sinned. And, 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 and that's the first thing you better admit. We've all sinned and we all, we all are... Uh, need to realize that we have been arrested by things that we should not have done. But Jesus came and died on the cross. He got in the electric chair for you. He got in the firing squad for you. He went to war for you. He said, I'll take your place and I will give you righteousness and, and I'm going to take all of your sins that you ever commit and I'm going to cover you and I'm going to put you under the blood and what I'm going to be is I'm going to be your judge, I'm going to be your savior, I'm going to fight for your freedom, I'm going to fight for your health, I'm going to fight for your happiness, I'm going to fight for you as long as you live. And Jesus came and the Bible says if you just believe in him, if you just say, Lord Jesus, I believe in you. And why wouldn't you say that for someone who's taken your place, that we all should have paid for something we've done wrong, but Jesus, oh, that's a little hand clap. Maybe we could get a big hand clap for the rock star called Jesus, who is the rock of our salvation. The simplicity of what is happening today is that Jesus died for us. Jesus is the King of Kings. He was God's Son. May not be a big deal to you, but it's a big deal to God. 
that God said there'll be no excuses because I'm going to give you a choice to be free, free from your addictions, free from your mentality handicaps, free from your cancers, free from your hurts, free, free, free. I know everybody here has felt the edge and the sting of hurt and being let down and somebody, somebody not treating you right. But Jesus said, look to me and I'll make things right. And he said these words, these are, these are great words of Jesus. He says, I'll make you a new creature. I'll set you free that the devil can't touch you. There's a hand clap moment right there. I mean, come on, a hand clap moment right there. Meaning, Jesus says, look, you're not perfect, but I'm gonna help you to be perfected. If you just talk about me, if you just believe in me, if you just won't be ashamed of me, if you just say, Jesus, you are the son of God. I don't understand why you did it, but I thank God you did it. And Lord, I want you to know, I want you to come in my heart. When you do that, you don't have to be perfect. You don't have to have everything right. You just ask him to come into your life and he cleanses you. See, his blood, let me explain his blood. His blood is like soap and water. It cleanses you. You become a new creature. Let me excite everyone that doesn't know this today. This may blow your mind and you're not going to figure out what I said but it will plague you in such a way in which you'll have to smile about what I'm about to tell you. And that is, here's the deal. Whatever you've done in the past, your friends know, your parents may know, people, people may know stuff on you that you wish you had never, number one, told them or even did it with. Oh, I'm talking to a perfect crowd here today, but I'm, I'm trying to find somebody who's messed up my hand is up, I'm a messer upper. And, and, and I don't know how I got to this point, but then Jesus comes along and says, do you believe in me, Steve? Yes, I do. Here's the deal, Steve. Everything you've done wrong, just by the way, Steve, I'm the one that has created you. I knew, oh, I knew you when you were in your mama's womb. Are you hearing what I'm saying? The reason why you're here today, it's not an accident. No, somebody brought me, oh no, oh no. A long time ago when you were in your mama's womb, Jesus saw you coming on the 4th of July and said, it doesn't matter how you got here, you got here and I'm about to give you freedom. Now, for you that are guests today, excuse these excited people, but these are the people that know what freedom is because, you know, most people can't say amen and shout in church. Usually they go to a funeral service when they go to church and everybody does sign language and everybody's, oh, my, my, my. But when you get around God, he's a happy God. He's a, he's a fun God. He's a, woo, he's a whoopee, shouting God. He's a, he's a, let's have a good time and, let everything that has breath just, just praise the Lord. Just, just say a hallelujah and a they all oh, thank you, Jesus. Come on, you can do that. They do it at the Bear Stadium. They do it at the Bull Stadium for a basketball and a pigskin. We do it for our sake. So today on this 4th of July of 2023, I just want you to note that, that Jesus has come to give you freedom and he comes and he tells you, look, what this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to take all the bad, all the sin, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to cover it. I'm going I'm to wash you. And here's another deal I'm going to do. I am going to be the one that's going to take my blood, and I'm going to go to God, and God is going to say, Jesus, what are you doing? This is so-and-so's name. They believe in me just as you have required them to. So, Lord, we're going to make them a brand new creature. And guess what? You got to tear the pages of memory out of the book of life 
because we are going to erase their past because the only thing you can do that God can do, there's only one thing you can do that God can't do. You can do that God can do. Only one thing. You can remember a sin that you repented of and said, I'm sorry I did that. And when you give it to Jesus, the Bible declares he remembers no more. And some of you that keep praying about your past, Lord, forgive me because what I did 10 years ago, it's not working. He doesn't know what you did because he can't remember it. Now right there confounds everybody, everybody in here. Everybody even saved people, even me. It confounds me to understand or try to understand the mystery of godliness that he can't remember and he's God. And, but he has pledged himself, watch this now, he's pledged himself that in freedom that he has as God, that he could destroy every one of us when we make a mistake. But he lives within the boundaries of freedom. What are the boundaries of freedom? In closing today, the boundaries of freedom is what Paul says in this writing. He says... He says these words in the 13th verse, for brethren, you have been called unto liberty. Only use not liberty for an occasion to the flesh. So how do I stay in the circumference and the boundaries of freedom without screwing my life up? And he says, by love, but by love, Serve one another. He goes on in the next verse. This is the boundaries. He goes on in the next verse. For all the laws are fulfilled in one word. Even this. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. This is the boundaries of freedom. He goes on and says in the next verse. But if ye bite and devour one another. And take heed that ye be not consumed of one another. I want to tell all of the people in the world. That's making up all kinds of cultures. And clubs and issues and protest. Put your sign down and start loving me. So I will love you. Because if we take our freedom we can take the freedom to destroy us instead of helping us. And the boundaries of freedom is we cannot bite and devour one another. If we stay in the boundaries, I love you wife, we won't divorce. I love you husband, we won't divorce. I love you girl, I respect you. I'll wait till we get married to have sex. Oh, that's a big one, but that, that, that's a huge boundary of freedom. I have the freedom to kill this baby because it's in me and I don't want anybody to know. But if you love one another, you can love girls who get pregnant and not condemn them, but help them because that is the boundaries of freedom. Here's a big one. We can love one another without looking at the color of one's skin. And we could say, I'm in the boundaries of freedom. I'm going to love you. I'm not going to destroy you. I'm not going to let the spirit of prejudice tear into me. The boundaries of freedom. Give us one more verse of that Galatians. This is the boundaries of freedom. So I say, walk in the spirit and ye shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. He gives us a list of all of you. Let it be a warning. Money will say you're free. Your independence will say you're free. Walk away from your parents and you'll say I'm free. Walk away from people who guide you. I'm free. But if you live by your flesh, you're really in prison. And when you're in prison, you can't love yourself. For the hardest people to love are the people who cannot forgive themselves.
Because when you don't love yourself, you don't love anybody else. I don't care how many times you get married. I don't care how, what titles you have. You're in prison. You're in bondage. And quickly he gives us the list. He says, look, hey guys. He gives you the list. He goes on and tells you. And you can read it on your own. He tells you. You can have freedom to commit fornication. You can have freedom to do uncleanliness. You can have freedom to be full of lasciviousness. You can have freedom to have idols. You can have freedom to get into witchcraft. You can have freedom to have wrath, strife, seditions. You can have freedom to be envy. Oh, for all of you that have envy, you're not free. You're a slave. You think you're free, but you're not free. Put your protest sign down and work on your own handcuffs because you have bound yourself beyond the boundaries of freedom. And when criticism comes out of your mouth and when you bite and devour one another, Christ says, I gave you freedom, but I didn't give you freedom to judge. I didn't give you freedom to hurt one another. I did not give you freedom that you think you're better than somebody else. There was nobody like Jesus at the Last Supper. It's a great one minute illustration as he knows it's the Last Supper. He's been with his boys for 12 or the 12 for three and a half years. They have no idea that one of them is going to betray him. They have no idea this is the last meal with me tonight. This is the last meal. They don't know he's going to be arrested. They don't know that a day from where they are in time, he'll be on a cross. They have no idea. He should have been relished. He should have been honored. He should have sat on a throne. But he knew freedom. So he takes a basin of water, kneels down to the disciples with their smelly, dirty feet, and says, I want to wash your feet. Peter's the first one to say, you're not washing my feet. No, sir. And Peter looks right in the eyes of Jesus, and Jesus is really telling him, poor Peter, you're still in prison. Sit down, Peter, let me wash your feet. No, Lord, you're not going to wash my feet. If I don't wash your feet, you have no part with me. Peter then says, then, wash my hands and my head and my face and my body. Here's the point. Until you learn to serve other people, you will never experience freedom. Who do you serve today? Who do you serve? Who do you serve? Do you serve envy, wrath, doubt? Who do you serve? Do you serve anger? Do you serve cussing? Do you serve all of the stuff that's happening in life? Oh, I can't wait to go to the party. Can't wait to get drunk. Can't wait to meet a new one. Can't wait. Who do you serve? You're serving your flesh. The Bible says, I'll make you free. But the key is, the only way you can stay free is to love one another. And let me say this real quick. You can't love somebody else until you love yourself. And you'll never love yourself until you forgive yourself. And if you're waiting on somebody to forgive you, don't wait. Turn to Jesus. He'll always forgive you. And once you know he's forgiven you, it don't matter if people forgive you. Because he's the one that has set you free, not people. Not the famous people. 
but Jesus. Gentlemen, take your places. We're all going to stand for the honoring of the real Statue of Liberty. Would you like to see it? We brought it today to show you the real Statue of Liberty. As you're standing, you have a cup. If you do not have this cup, music louder, please. Raise your hand and the usher will bring you a cup. This cup is called Freedom, Holy Communion. All guests, everyone here, you're welcome to take this. You do not have to be a member of religion, a church, or this one. This will act, this will really help you in freedom. In this cup, if you don't have one, lift your hand. Everybody kind of look around, love one another to make sure everybody's got a cup. In this cup is fruit of the vine. The top of the cup, in a moment you'll tear it open and it's unleavened bread. The fruit of the vine is, is a grape. It's been squeezed in here. And Jesus said, if you do this, you'll remember me. Meaning I'm going to give you freedom if you remember me. He says, as often as you do this Holy Communion, you remember that I died for you to give you freedom. Then he exchanges and said, listen, if you will take Holy Communion, I will do three things. And Apostle Paul bears down on it. In Corinthians, when he says, if there's any sickness in your body, you'll be healed. If, if, if the devil's trying to kill you before your time, and you can die before your time, Holy Communion will not allow you to die before your time. And number three, he'll give you strength. So everyone, turn the mics on the praises, please. Say these words with me, Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus. I want freedom. I want freedom. Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus. If there's anything in my heart, forgive me. For I believe you're the Son of the living God. You are the Son of the living God. And Jesus, I believe on the 4th of July weekend, first Sunday, first Sunday. I'm taking Holy Communion because I believe in freedom. I will be healed. I will be delivered. I will be protected. Ladies and gentlemen, take Holy Communion. Everybody, everybody. Everybody. 
Everybody. Everybody say pop. pop. No, go pop. Pop. No, everybody. Come on, you do better than that. I'm trying to make you sound like a uh, fireworks. Say pop. Pop. Every pop you hear in the next 24 hours, every fireworks that goes off, let it sound freedom to you. Let every pop be love. Let us love one another. Yes. When you're eating your barbecue, wherever you are, let love come out of you. That is the boundaries of freedom. Hey, Wednesday night, it's going to be great. Summer Sizzle, God bless you. Take us out. Oh, happy day. Oh, happy day. Oh, happy day. Oh, happy day. When she's a small.